What's up, humans? How y'all doing? Tonight, as you can tell, we're coming from a car inside a vacuum. You can't dispute me on this because as you can tell by my background here, which is not green at all, it is in fact Starman. And he's in the vacuum of space right now, so I don't want to hear your shit, Daniel Pratt. But yes, we're going over Daniel Pratt today, as you guys probably already know. For the last time, when I use these basketball examples and they say, oh, that's spinning way too fast, in a way, they're correct, yes. Here we go, you ready? Here's the water. The guy that we are, are responding to is definitely an idiot. Ding. <laughs> Ding. Let's start this, Daniel. What do you got for us today, huh? Four seconds in, and it's just him looking up and realizing, oh shit, I turned on the camera. When the fuck that happened? Okay, what do I got to pull out my ass right now? Um, oh fuck, rotation! If you have a merry-go-round, okay, and you're standing in the merry-go-round, in the center of the merry-go-round, and it's going one mile an hour, start walking towards the outer rim of that merry-go-round, and you tell me if you can tell with your senses that the speed is increasing. Tell me that you can just walk in a perfectly straight line on a merry-go-round from the inner point, center axis it's spinning on, to the outer rim without noticing any difference in the way you walk and the motion in which you are walking. For the last time, when I use so Daniel, are you trying to compare a merry-go-round to the fucking earth? Seriously? A merry-go-round is in a sphere, Daniel! Damn, Daniel! You an idiot! <laughs> Ding! Ding! This is what you would call an equivalence fallacy. An equivalence fallacy is when you take two things, you try to equate them, but they don't really equate, that you can't use them as an example, so it's a failed comparison. So he's trying to say that spinning a merry-go-round, even as fast as the actual Earth rotates, it should be comparable to the spin of the Earth. But what he doesn't realize, apparently, is that the Earth is a fucking sphere. It is not a merry-go-round. Merry-go-rounds are, are incredibly small compared to the Earth, obviously. But also, if you were to spin the merry-go-round, at the rate that the fucking earth spins, like in rotations per minute, you wouldn't be able to tell the motherfucker was moving if you walked to the end of it from the center. No, Daniel, you wouldn't be able to because it's moving too fucking slow. It moves at like, oh fuck, what is it? Um, 0. 0.000694 repeating rotations per minute. Do you know how fast that fucking is, honey? Not very fast. Half the speed of the hour hand on a clock. Oh man, that's brutal. That's really slow. It, oh, it's like a sloth like. You remember the sloth lady on The Bachelor? Yes, honey, I do remember the sloth lady on The Bachelor. Thank you for telling everybody that I've watched The Bachelor. Use these basketball examples and they say, oh, that's spinning way too fast. In a way, they're correct. Yeah. Holy shit! He said, in a way, they are correct. What the fuck? Daniel Pratt agrees that the merry-go-round spinning so fucking fast is wrong. He really just said that? In a way. Ooh. In a way. In a way? Yeah, he's about to. I mean, I haven't seen this, but my guess is he's about to explain why, in a way, you're right, but you're actually wrong. Okay, well, let's see. I don't know. Right now, I feel like this soundbite is like, in a way, they're right. And we could just fucking use that. We can meme the shit out of that. <laughs> if I were to take that basketball, okay, and okay. they had a pinpoint dot saying, this is the axis right where Earth rotates off of. And I place that basketball right on top of that axis. They're absolutely right. That's how slow it would rotate. Well, no, I mean, it rotates that slow all over the goddamn Earth. Do you think that the North Pole or the South Pole, where the axis, where the axis, axes, axes, axes are, 
Do you think those like rotate like at, at different like like they spin around at different fucking speeds? Like rotations per minute is different than like miles per hour. And this is where they get confused because they confuse the rotation of the Earth with how fast the surface of the Earth is moving from a reference point that's either like outside of the Earth or at the Earth's core. So we got emotionally mimetic psychopath here. Anybody else think that the merry-go-round example disproves the flat earth since a merry-go-round is on a flat spinning surface? Yeah, that, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I think that that would be a good thing to bring up. Like if, if anybody ever tries to bring up a merry-go-round, just be like, motherfucker, that thing spins and it's flat. What the fuck you doing, motherfucker? <laughs> I think I'm using that too much. I'm going to get like age restricted. It would take that basketball all day to get around one circle if the earth were actually rotating. A it takes everywhere on the fucking earth to go around in one day because that's what a fucking day is, Daniel. Agreed. What they fail to mention is the second you start walking towards the equator, the speed you of the ground you are moving on supposedly will increase exponentially with every mile you travel. Okay, no. No, that's just simply not correct. I don't know if he just heard the word exponential one time and he's just like, exponential, that just means it grows really fast, right? Or it goes really fast, grows really fast, something like that. But actually, it's a cosine that actually determines, like, like you could plot it on a, on a cosine graph, like the different uh, surface speeds of, of the different places on Earth. It's actually the cosine of your latitude, I believe. Yes, it's the cosine of your latitude, so that at the latitude of 45 degrees, you're moving at 1180 uh, kilometers an hour. And you would you would basically use cosine of the degree latitude that you're on in order to determine your surface speed. Uh, and you would multiply that by the surface speed at the equator, because let's see, at the equator, it's uh, 1670 kilometers per hour, or 1037 miles per hour. Not that you guys are going to do the math on this. I mean, you really don't need to. But in other words, it is no different than standing at the North Pole, the axis we spin on, and you start walking towards the equator is no different than if you were on a stationary platform and started walking straight ahead. And, and every five feet, there was a new uh, moving walkway. And the first one was going one mile an hour, and the next one two miles an hour, and the next one three miles an hour, the next one four miles an hour, the next one five miles an hour, the next one six miles an hour, all the way as you walk to the equator until you get to the one that's moving 1,000 miles an hour. That has to be, according to mathematics and every physical principle on this earth, moving 1,000 miles an hour, that walkway must be moving at the equator. I don't even understand the scenario that he just gave. That's not at all what it would be. I mean, I, I get that you're trying to say that the, the surface is moving at different speeds um, at different latitudes or whatnot, which that's a very educational way of saying what you said. Um, but, but uh, uh, you know, I get that you're saying that, but what you're not understanding is that gravity is holding us onto the Earth and the gravity is pulling us at whatever speed that it's, uh, at whatever speed the Earth is rotating at. So, I mean, true... Like at 45 degrees, you're going to be moving a lot slower than you are at, say, the equator. Um, but at the same time, you're not going to actually feel that kind of movement because, uh, I mean, we don't we don't feel like we feel the change of velocity. We, we feel that we don't feel what you think that we are supposed to feel. I, I don't understand why he's comparing it to like walkways that are moving at different speeds, because I feel like that assumes that the, the earth is sectioned out into specific areas where the speed is certain things. It's like, it, you know, it's a gradual change. I mean, when there's a gradual change, I mean, you're not going to feel it. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you have any idea what he was fucking saying? I have no idea what he's saying. You know why? Why? Because Daniel Pratt's a fucking idiot. Oh, Daniel Pratt's a fucking idiot. And they would like to tell us in walking straight across moving walkways that increase by one mile an hour, every one that you step on, you aren't going to notice any difference. They cannot refute 
that that basketball spinning on the North Pole, yes, it's going to be spinning very slow. But you put that basketball point on one point on the equator, it has to be moving at 1,000 miles per hour. Well, yeah, in a reference frame that's like outside the Earth or at the center of the Earth, sure, it's moving that fast. But the only thing that really uh, matters is its angular speed, and that's the rotational speed, which is 0.0006944 repeating rotations per minute. Per minute, you're getting that small bit of a rotation, and that's what you would feel. I mean, I don't, I don't think he realizes that on the surface of the Earth, we're actually traveling at whatever speed, wherever we are on the Earth. Like, we change in speed like with the earth, but it, the change in speed isn't enough for us to actually notice it. This is what you assholes don't want people to understand. No, it's not that we don't want to understand it. <laughs> uh, what we, it's not that we don't want people to understand it. We want people to understand it, but you're wanting them to understand shit wrong. So in other words, if I take a circle and I start in the center and start walking towards the outer rim of that circle. And every step I take is a different walkway that's moving one mile an hour more than the first one or the previous. I just want to know why his finger's right in the camera. Like, well, oh. why, why is he doing that? Oh, because he drew a circle, which is supposed to be the spherical Earth. And then he, then he pointed to the North Pole, which is the, or, well, the, the axis on the north and he's he drew an imaginary line out and is talking about see circles are two dimensional objects they're not spherical objects so it's actually like here's a sphere and then you would walk along the outside of the sphere and the sphere is moving at a certain speed like rotationally would you be able to feel it fuck no you wouldn't be able to feel it one thing gravity keeps us held on to the earth as we walk along the surface of it, we're going to be changing along with the, the the land speed. But even then, that's the wrong reference frame, Daniel dumbass. You, yeah. you know what would help Daniel out? What? A whiteboard. A whiteboard. <laughs> Daniel, I will give you $30 to get a whiteboard. Contact <laughs> me. I will PayPal you this shit if you will get a whiteboard. How much did we pay for that whiteboard over there? Oh, I don't know. That one was maybe like 60 67 I We'll think give you $30 for a shitty whiteboard, okay? <laughs> That's what you can afford to put up in that place. You can put it right there on that fucking key ring rack that you got for some right reason. Right there, or he could hang it behind him on the water heater. Yeah. <laughs> this is his experiment that disproves the rotation of the Earth. Oh, up here. here is the variable switch I'll be using. Just turn it up to get the ball. Takes a second to kick in. So, again, this is what they want us to think. I should be spinning it the speed to represent Earth. Actually, no, that is not the speed. That is still going way too fast. But, I mean, if you want to scale it down and everything like that, and you want to, like, I mean, basically, you have a really short day going on there. You would have to make it spin a whole lot slower in order for it to actually match what the Earth is doing. But again, like I explained in the last video and the other day, that's how slow, even slower, it would be spinning would be slower it would be slower but this is still too fast for the earth like it's not a good comparison yeah. this is how <laughs> slow it would be spinning i mean slower way slower even hold on you know this would be more representative to what they say it should be i would agree it's more representative but not actually representative if i were to pour this water on there now but like I just showed you, this is nowhere the rim velocity of what the true equator of Earth is in miles per hour. Well, it seems to me like you're confusing the land speed with the rotational speed or the angular speed. 
And I, I, I get that you don't understand that, despite the fact that you claim to understand physics and math, but you're not understanding the basic difference in what speed you're even measuring. In order to reach that same force or rim velocity, this, the maximum I can get to is 107, what we came up with miles per hour. But using this switch, Oh God, guys, this is, I mean, this is like, this is like when you see the dunce kid in the room about to do the science experiment and you're like, oh God, please don't blow up the entire school. Oh, what did you mix? Oh fuck, that's gonna fuck us up. <laughs> Cause I feel like he's gonna turn it on high and the ball is just gonna fling off of it and it's gonna like hit his camera and then bang, hit him in the nuts. And we'll see what happens with the water. Hopefully it doesn't get all... What's gonna down. happen, Daniel? But, uh, here we go. Ready? And hopefully the ball stays on. Oh shit, oh shit! Okay, so I'm gonna show you. This is only halfway up. The dial is only halfway up, okay? I love how he's doing this quote unquote experiment and he's not wearing any kind of safety gear. He's not taking any kind of safety precautions at all. Honey. Yeah. It's a fucking idiot. I know he's a fucking idiot. Okay, let's see what, what happens. Here we go, you ready? Okay, I would like to point out how it, it like spinning that fast, it really is a good example of how the, it, like there's a squishing effect on the earth because the centrifugal force causes it to expand and it gives it that, that kind of oblong, oblate spheroid shape. <laughs> motherfucker look at that you pour water on the top of the earth and it's just gonna fly every fucking where well also does he think that's how water got on the earth that I, some magical some out of somewhere it just got bored on the earth yeah exactly yeah he i guess he thinks that somebody's pouring water continuously on the earth and it's fucking flying off see how it hasn't even covered half the ball well, uh, Is anybody else disappointed that like shrapnel didn't fly off and like blind his ass? I mean, I don't want him to get hurt, but like the flying off and hitting him in the balls thing would have been funny. <laughs> we just don't want you to have children, Daniel. <laughs> the water didn't even get all the way down to the rim. Okay. And notice how it starts to potato out like uh, the pear shape, Neil deGrasse Tyson's pear shape. Okay. Well, not just pear shape, but it makes it an oblong, uh, an oblate spheroid. That because that's what the Earth fucking is. See, it didn't even get down to the halfway point of the ball. Do you think a magical fuck is throwing water on the top of the fucking Earth? What is this supposed to fucking prove? That you can't just throw water on the top of the Earth? And that was only halfway up. Oh fuck. See how it starts to flatten out? Yes. And that's only at maybe 60 miles per hour rim velocity. Now obviously the earth is a little harder than that, so it would take a little longer, but after billions of years, oh, we got the wobble in there and everything. Oh fuck. You know what Daniel Pratt needs? What? He needs to put himself a butt plug on the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> and go fuck himself? Yeah. Go fuck yourself with your drill, Daniel Pratt. No, no, not with the drill. Not with the drill, because that could be dangerous. You have to put a, you know, like a, something on the drill. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, at maximum 70 miles an hour rim velocity. There's no way that water is staying on this sphere. I, show I like how drunk he sounds like I get that I'm a little drunk right now but at least I don't maybe sound drunk he's like the, the water was pouring on this at like uh, 60 miles an hour it didn't stay on I mean when you sound drunk it's because you're putting it on I know 
If you guys <laughs> like the video, be sure to like this, like it down there, actually like it. And uh, make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. I hope that you will stand up, use your voice, all that kind of good shit, and I'll see you heathens later. Make sure you click one of these links on the screen here, because it would really help me out. Either subscribe or share one of these videos, watch and share, obviously, and that would really help me out.